Okay, this video is called Water Paradox. We're gonna talk about two water paradoxes. Um, and it's with regard to water filtration. Years ago, I was pretty interested in water and I did like a research paper on it, but all I've got on it now is, is just sort of, I found this one piece of paper and a stack of papers. And so here, here's the key point. There's two key points in this talk. Uh, the first one is that the more you filter water, the lower the pH goes. Um, I've got the blue is the water we actually worked with. So here was well water after an iron filter and a softener. And we had a TDS of 560. We had a pH of about 7. So right in the middle of the pH scale between 1 and 14. The higher the number, the more basic or more alkaline. The lower the number, the more acidic. Tap water usually has a pH in the ballpark of 7.5. TDS will be somewhere around 500 quite often. We also tested some other things. I'll come back to that in just a moment. The, after reverse osmosis, um, the TDS total dissolved solids. That's number of particles per unit of volume. Let's just say it's a milliliter. It'll be less than that. Let's say it's a milliliter, though, with 17 after reverse osmosis. So that's a dramatic reduction from 560 um, coming out after the iron filter. And, the, and that's actually after a whole house carbon filter, 560 from well water down to that. It's still pretty high. Um, then after reverse osmosis, it dropped to 17. So that's really low in terms of particles. Uh, your blood, by the way, is about 300, 285 to 300 osmolality. Osmolality is not exactly the same thing as TDS in terms of particles because your blood's alive and blood changes depending on whether it's flowing fast or slow or stationary. It'll clot when it's stationary. Whereas water, so it's a non-Newtonian fluid. It's a thick isotropic fluid. Whereas water is what's called a Newtonian fluid. It's the same moving or standing, fast or slow movement. Anyways, the point is you can kind of loosely just go by that general idea. And when your water starts getting below 200 and the TDS, there's a risk the more you drink of it of becoming hyponatremic or getting a headache or something. So dramatic reduction in particles with reverse osmosis filtration and then with distillation an even more dramatic drop all the way down from zero to two uh, for the total dissolved solids with distillation okay notice the ph also comes down to about 5.8 with reverse osmosis and we got about five with uh, distillation for this study so the point is here's the paradox the more you purify the water, you do that to get all the bad things out of it, all the stuff you don't want, the aluminum, the estrogenics, uh, the F- minus, and other toxic things. But you pay a price for that in that it becomes hypoosmolar and it becomes acidic. To deal with the hypoosmolarity, you can squeeze a lemon into it. I usually would eat a meal first. Nowadays, I don't drink much water. I put the water into my food. Like, let's say I reverse osmosis water. Well, I'll make oatmeal, and then the oatmeal will have a lot of water in it, and so I'll get my water from the oatmeal. I'll make rice, and that'll have the reverse osmosis water in the rice. I'll get my water from that. I'll boil my potatoes. A little bit of water soaks into the potatoes, the sweet potatoes, the beans when you boil them. Um, there's a lot of water in fruits. I eat a lot of fruits. So I don't have a problem with hydration, but I'm just saying is, I don't go around drinking water. Um, and in one of these papers, I'll show you some reasons why I'm not a big believer in this drink so much water stuff. Um, okay, what is interesting about the soda pop and stuff, Red Bull pH 3.3, that's super acidic. Because remember, it's a logarithmic scale. When you go from 6 to 7, that's 10 times, 6 is 10 times more acidic. So then to go to 5 would be 100 times more, from 7 would be 100 times more acidic. To go to 4, 1,000 times. To go to 3 would be 10,000 times more acidic. So Red Bull is very acidic. And Coca-Cola is even more acidic. And Sprite is even more acidic. Soda pop is terrible for your teeth because not only is it super acidic, it's full of sugar, which the, the bacteria in your mouth like, plus it's sticky. So it sticks to your tooth, it's acidic, and it's got the sugar in it, so it helps the bacteria to burn holes in your teeth and cause cavities. Origin, orange juice is really bad for that as well. Um, so that was the most important stuff on here. Okay, I got a couple other slides, not too many. Okay, one thing about hyponatremia, there are these runners, especially somebody, you know, the marathon champion in the 1960s and 70s didn't even drink any water at all the entire race. Then when they started selling bottled water in the 1980s, it became this thing, oh, eight cups a day, and everybody thought it was cool to walk around with bottled water. Like I said, I was a wrestler in college. We sweat off 5, 10 pounds of practice. We never drink water till after practice. Okay, so hyponatremia, they're calling it exercise-associated hyponatremia, EAH here. 
And that's described as drinking too much water. Like let's say when you're running a, a distance race, 10K, um, 26 miles, whatever, marathon. Water intoxication. This guy Noakes was one of the big people describing it. Okay, neurologic disorders and even deaths due to hyponatremic encephalopathy have occurred. Yeah, you'll hear plenty of things about people having seizures, passing out unconscious, some dying from drinking way too much water because they would drink water at every, at every uh, like, uh, you know, care station every 500 yards or something, and they were drinking way too much water. Versus, you hear a lot of the, you know, the top-notch athletes. They'll they'll have some particle material in it, some sweets, you know. And Gatorade also had more electrolytes and uh, sugar in it, of course, than just plain water. Uh, women seem to be more vulnerable to this, maybe because they're drinking more water relative to their body weight. But exercise-induced hyponatremia from drinking too much water is a very dangerous thing. Okay, um, here's a little interesting thing. This is a paper about higher pH water. So when it's more alkaline, the higher the pH, they found that it had therapeutic benefits. Um, the higher pH water was associated with lowering the blood pressure, and it was associated with uh, having a lower cholesterol. When the water was more uh, acidic, so here's, here's alkaline. When it's more acidic, blood pressures were higher, blood was thicker, higher viscosity. Uh, I'll show you another paper to that effect. But what I, well, what I would get out of this is eat the fruits. Eat your, you know, grains tend to be about neutral. Fruits, alkaline fruits and vegetables, meats, acidic um, is a general way to think of it. And also the more protein, the protein's an amino acid. Look at, a, look at a, a protein. It's got, you know, carboxylic acid on every single amino acid. Okay, so here's a paper showing dietary acid load and cardio metabolic risk factors in Japanese women. The bottom line is the more acid load, the higher was their blood pressure, and the higher was their total and their LDL cholesterol. So it has a negative cardiovascular effect. Of course, our main concern recently, we've been talking about cancer a lot, is increased acidity, like from the meats or whatever, are gonna make it um, more acidic. It increases your risk of cancer growing. Um, now, there's also raises the question, well, some companies will tell you, well, we can make your water more alkaline. The only catch is usually when a company does something, they're looking for the cheapest way possible, and whatever they do tends to make it worse. I remember studying a couple of alkaline waters, and I didn't like them. I didn't buy them, and I don't routinely drink bottled water of any type. I have reverse osmosis filtered well water, which I think is the best you could do because it was good well water to begin with. Um, and I don't drink water like on a routine basis. I just put it in my food. I don't specifically seek out water to drink it. Okay, so that's all the slides I had. Um, and so we talked about don't drink too much water, especially if it's over purified. You can get water intoxication and hyponatremia. Um, it can have neurologic headaches is the earlier symptom, but it can make you have a seizure and it worse things. So um, I like to get the water from the food. And just eating the fruits and vegetables, that gives you the alkalinity. That's what you want. That helps make your tumor environment less acidic, and that makes you healthier. And we just showed it also improves blood pressure, improves cholesterol, etc. So anyways, hope that was helpful.